This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hey, this podcast contains swearing and adult content. Reliving trauma through a humorous sense. That's why I'm a sinner for our friends. We love misfortune. Ooh, we'll spin it around. This is a podcast. What on BBC Sounds? We love misfortune with Alison and Fern. I don't have a line about shame, which well, is shameful in itself. It is. You should be ashamed of yourself, Fern. Um, I'm Alison Spittle. I'm Fern Brady, and if you haven't heard the podcast before, this is the podcast where listeners can share their shame, like the confession booth of Mm. podcasts. Uh, Every week we spin a wheel, we pick an embarrassing topic, and you guys share your stories with us. And this week, the wheel has landed on... Self-love, which is nice BBC speak for wanking. But um, is it even embarrassing or shameful? Fern, it's so shameful. Why? To me, to me, because you're a frigid. Genuinely, genuinely. I mean, I'm what so does that say about me? Last night, yesterday, I had a very stressful day at work. Yeah. And then I came in and I smoked my vape and uh, passed out. And I woke up this morning and my vibrator was lying next to me. <laughs> what a life! What a life! <laughs> my boyfriend must have just come in and saw me there with like <laughs> the weed and vibrator next to me. The va- I love, uh, yeah, that is that is that is quite the life. Um, yeah, I've just never, I don't know, like, uh, do you know the way I feel that we have different shame factors around stuff? You're, you have a big shame thing about nakedness. I feel and family. I, yeah, I do. Mm. Um. What else to have shame about? Because I'm not really ashamed of that. That's not weddings. You know. I think getting married would be embarrassing. Anything where you, <laughs> anything where you tell your friends and family earnestly that you care for them is shameful to me. And it's so good being your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like now is as good a time oh, as Oh, yeah, any. every week we have to say that I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm leaving um, because Alison slapped me across the face <laughs> one day <laughs> with no explanation. So, yeah, Fern is leaving. In. This is like uh, the... the This is the third last episode. Third last, so it's the, the pre-penultimate. We after this. We got yeah. two more. Um, but about wanking... Yes, um, back to wanking. I don't know how we have such different levels of embarrassment over it because yeah. we're both um, from Catholic backgrounds. I reckon I was raised more strictly than you. I think so, yeah. But I was getting my hands on a Cosmo magazine and lots of uh, women's magazines at the time. And I read a lot of books, so I knew that my family's view on it was um, unusual. Maybe, maybe it's because like, maybe it's because I'm fat, and it's a bit physically strenuous. To it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. No, I know, I know. Just like it never came natural to me. It just wasn't, and right. I don't, I don't think I'm better than anyone. I'm actually very jealous of people that like, like I, by I'm reading a book. My friend wrote a book. And uh, one chapter is just dedicated to her, like just constantly wanking on a pillow when she was eight years old. Oh, and yeah, I don't, people do that. I never did that. I never did that. No, I can't. I mean, like, I'm not going to lie and say I haven't wanked. I have wanked. Face but, like, down on a pillow. Was she doing? Was she doing it like that? She was kind of. I think it sounds to me from reading the book. It sounded to me like she was like riding on it like a horse, like Cruel Intentions too. Do you remember that? But I never did it um, that way. Um, but I remember uh, learning to wank while listening to Radiohead albums. What? So, um, OK Computer and um, the other one. The one, the one that's like all really suicidal songs. You were like, just oh, makes me think of wanking. <laughs> yeah. Just Tom York being all sad. You're like, it's. A, it, I think it must have wired me a certain way I to gen- be really morose. Genuinely, I think that's the most fern Brady like origin <laughs> story ever. Like, if there's ever a film about your life, we need to get it. Like, well, because I would play the CDs really loud in my bedroom, and my parents must have walked past thinking, "Oh, she'd be cutting herself again." <laughs> <laughs> a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would I? <laughs> so. Yeah. This this is a bit embarrassing. Go on. Duh. Go okay. on. 
my face has got it feels a bit red. This is my favorite I loved, type of fan story. I loved working so much. <laughs> One summer I was staying at my grandparents and I made a wanking diary. A wanking diary? <laughs> Where I thought I would list all the different ones I did every day. <laughs> I don't want to even look at you. I look away. I look away. I, I thought I just felt like I'd invented something amazing. This was when Wanking. I was twelve. <laughs> I just thought it was amazing. Um, Did you ever tell anyone about it? No, this is the first time I've told anyone about it, my diary of wanking. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was doing it every day at, at my very religious grandparents' house. I'm sure there's an app for that, though. Do you know the way, like, there's a period tracker app? There's oh, definitely... what, now with Gen Z people? God, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they have everything now. Back in my day, you were uh, b- groping blindly in the dark, literally. <laughs> like, um, it's annoying because I was either incredibly embarrassed by it or I did it, and then it's like, uh, it's like honestly, like brushing your teeth at this stage, and it's not something I feel shame of. But I don't have any funny wanking. I never like went abseiling and wanking at the same time, or you know, I mean, that would be very hard to do. Something I've had a lot. Uh, is when I've because I've had to like live in hotel rooms when I've done tours in Australia. Yeah, uh, is the the cleaner leaving? Like they'll tidy everything up and then they'll just politely leave a dildo by the side of the bed, <laughs> or or they put it under your pillow. And I have a cleaner now. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and she she's done the same thing. She's she... just tastefully left it on my bedside table, <laughs> and it makes me feel like the most spoiled woman in the world. What is? It's like you know when you're in a hotel and you look and you see like the toilet roll. There's a it's been folded into like a little arrow shape, yeah. and that's like a contract with you and the cleaner to say I haven't used this toilet roll yeah and uh yeah well, so where, where are you going with this I'm, I'm just thinking about the dildo <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know like I don't know how I'm very sex positive and stuff because my family did everything to go against that <laughs> my mum found my vibrator when I was at school yeah like when I was out at school you had a vibrator in school Alison, I don't know how I was this progressive. No access to the internet. Constantly getting my copies of Just Seventeen taken away from me. Fern, you were a gifted, gifted child wanker. You were a gifted child right? wanker. That's what yeah. I think. Like I don't know how I was. Like I feel so grateful. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know who to be grateful for. Maybe myself for the summer I kept my diary of different types of wanks. <laughs> yeah, it's self love. Self love. Well, anyway, my mum found my vibrator when I was out at school. Um, and she took you can split you split it in half and there's like a battery goes in. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She took one half away. That's so rude. What a psycho! Because you, what's that saying? That is saying I have seen this. It's saying I've seen it, and I'm gonna take away your ability to come, love, mum. <laughs> That's the <laughs> no, my mum. My mum doesn't know what a podcast is. She doesn't know what the internet is. That's the actions of a frigid. <laughs> that is. That's a cock blocker. In, yeah, in, in so many respects, isn't that mad? That's a disgrace. It's one of the most. It's like one of many mad things that my mum has done. Constantly trying to stop me have a ride. Oh my god! Anyway, let's do voice notes. <laughs> yeah. This is like one of my favorites. Uh, so, check it out, Fern. I was living abroad um, and trying to learn a language. So I was doing language classes with a bunch of other kind of early twenty-year-olds, and our teacher was smoking hot. All the girls in the class were like, oh, he's very tasty. And we were all, you know, in our own separate ways, trying to put a little bit of flirt on him. And he was just really kind, really like calm and did not rise to the flirting at all. Um, and it was a great, you know, time. And eventually he said to everyone, right, I'm, um, I'm actually quitting this job. I'm going to go traveling in India. Uh, and I, I finish next week and if anyone wants to come and meet me, I'm going to have drinks at this bar at this time and da da da. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'm going to come along. Uh, my mates all dropped out. It ended up being him, his two mates and me. <laughs> and um, we're sitting there all having drinks and chatting away and I was sitting next to him. And, and we were It's a lovely story a so far. Closer and a little bit closer and I was like, huh, 
there's definite vibes going on here with the hot teacher here's a fantasy to live out um and so like his two mates were like okay we're gonna head off and I was like oh oh, it's happening he turned around he said to me I have fancied you for weeks grabbed my face and we just like stormy seas made out stormy we were, like, seas, stormy out. seas. <laughs> what does that mean i take it like what we we're talking stormy seas like a lot of saliva involved maybe or something oh like i thought it was a, f- a reference to a film or like captain bird's eye or something like that no <laughs> no right pl- keep pulling i'll keep playing we were like making out for it was like the seal was broken you know i like constantly for like two hours in the bar probably pissing everyone else off around us like Amazing. the kind of thing where it's like uh give me a key i'm moving into your mouth let me live there i never want to leave <laughs> I um, love this you should so write deciding. novels she should write erotic novels yeah i feel this is good um so we decided we got to bring this you know he's got one night he's off his plane is in the morning like we've got to go find a spot so we went down to the beach and found a little like hidden cove and um yeah just had some very very raucous steamy beach sex which you know <laughs> sex on the beach uh is yeah. quite sandy We've all heard a little it. bit painful <laughs> but you know the levels that it was it was worth it so yeah. whilst we were you know I'm so happy for up, this person we heard this really strange sound it's like kind of a sloshy scratchy kind of sneaky sound and um i turned around to look around what this was and it was this man crouched in the shadows (laughs) wanking (laughs) watching us have sex and so like both of us were like oh my god you know freaked out (laughs) totally but but naked and um so this guy got up and um went over to the man and said you know like go away like leave us alone like you shouldn't be doing this and um he was actually quite quite buff uh because he was ex-army what? And, oh uh, i thought you meant the wanker i guess he said no <laughs> like, he and the man just squ- ejaculated <laughs> as you were telling him oh. that's probably what he wanted that's probably what he wanted i love that this the details of this this woman's life is incredible well, what does she think? Like, she's made them sound like a pretty hot couple. Yeah. It's really been built up. Yeah. So can you blame her if people wank at them when they have sex <laughs> in public? Because you're not supposed to have sex in public. Who do you think you are, Adam and Eve? <laughs> They're having sex on a beach. They should be... If you, if you see someone have sex, you should... I think you Pull should... Pull your be... trousers down. <laughs> They're like Adam and Eve and this man's the snake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The wanking snake. Yeah. Um, Right. I'll keep playing because there's more. And uh, the guy said, I guess he said no. Or like he was just like squared up to him. So the next thing I see is like this butt naked teacher (laughs) just punch this man full out he floored him i was like oh my god if i wasn't turned on before i'm turned on more now um so the man you know got punched out and he left and the teacher came back and we had more incredible sex literally until the sun rose and um had this wonderful movie scene moment where we sort of made out on the beach waved goodbye he walked one way i walked the other way and we never saw each other again but um it was <laughs> i don't know if this is misfortune maybe it's yeah a little bit because the man was wanking on us yeah or on us at us <laughs> you know yeah no okay he didn't wank um, on so you. yeah that's my story <laughs> <laughs> no. sounds to me like you're showing off please <laughs> please go, go write a book your use of language is incredible yeah don't send us your amazing <laughs> sex stories i'm in a 10-year relationship why are you taunting me i know that is very true all i can do is look back through the mess of time <laughs> in my mind and you're telling me about beach sex and people <laughs> wanks to it because you're so sexy that you're like a real life porno no, i think i think in fairness like it doesn't matter how sexy you are. Like, the guy having the wank on the beach, I feel, is in the wrong. It's such a... It's... He's the one that should be ashamed. Who does... I hope the next voice note is like, Oh, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a voyeur. Yeah. I 
I just saw these young people on the beach. And I just that would, had to that would actually be shameful if we started getting things like that coming in. That would be amazing. Yeah, it would be amazing. Thank you so much for sending your voice, though. Uh, it made me so happy. I'm going to play the next voice, though. I'm going to play the next voice, though. Okay. <clears throat> dum, 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 dum. Uh, I grew up in a very repressed household. Yay! And, uh, well, you're welcome. I probably didn't actually touch myself until I was like 20 and uh, did that at university. Well, ironically, reading um, uh, The Wife of Bath's Tale from the Canterbury Tales, real sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I did an English lit degree and I still can't read old English. We yeah. definitely covered it. Have you ever seen um, the way Canterbury Tales is written? It's, no. It's like another language. Uh, but the, the wife of Bath, as I understand it, she's a bit of a... Um, she put, puts it about a bit. That's what the story's about. Right. But I've never heard of it. Wow, people like you exist. I'm, re- <laughs> I'm re- yeah. It's the, the wife of bath tales. As keep, well. <laughs> I'll keep playing. I'll keep playing. <laughs> it's all so hot, isn't it? All these stuff. Uh, anyways, <laughs> back home at my parents' house for the summer, they don't believe in um, privacy or locked doors because <sighs> my firefighter father thinks that we're going to lock ourselves in our room, start a fire, and not be able to escape or have a so mic. no locks on doors <laughs> yeah. also no concept of knocking before <laughs> entering rooms coming from the parents so i took to uh masturbating hiding in my closet with all of my childhood toys just <laughs> stacked up in boxes <laughs> silently judging me beanie babies looking at me uh which actually beanie babies have quite judgmental eyes I I've got um, I've got the plot of the wife of Bath. Have you got it? Let's hear it. <laughs> this is the first line. The tale concerns a knight accused of rape. Oh! Whose, whose life shall be spared if in one year he discovers what women most desire. He eventually turns to an ugly old witch who promises him the answer that will save his life if he will do the first thing she, <laughs> she asks of him. <laughs> I just, at what point did you act? Like, at what point? <laughs> so that's the, that's the, that's the tale. That's the tale. The so central, we... <laughs> the central message of the wife of Bath is yeah. that ugly or fair, women should be obeyed in all things by their husbands. Oh, that's nice. It does, it's like, I love the way it's like, we start with an accusation of a sexual assault. <laughs> This night is getting me to I re- again like I really never thought we'd get something like that sent in. I know and I'm so thankful. Like thank you so much. I'll get there's more. There's a few seconds more we'll hear what the rest is. You the song at the end be- though, you have to sing it all in old English. Let's do it. Let's do it. At one point. My father did walk in and luckily I was hiding in the closet and he couldn't find me and then left again. I don't think I finished that time. No, fair enough. (laughs) I'm just reading extracts from it and I'm still like, where did you? (laughs) I would well. Abraham was an holy man and Jacob eke as fair forth as I can. (laughs) And ech of him had a wife more than two. That does sound. That does sound, Fred, like you're trying to read a book aloud while coming. It does sound like that. It sounds like you're just trying to read a normal book while 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 getting up. Where you're like, and I did say to the man. <laughs> this is the only sexy bit. Um, that high god defended marriage by express words. <laughs> I pray you telleth me, or where commanded he virginity? <laughs> There's like no sexy bits. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for this woman that she's like found herself sexually, and that she said that in, you're a queen, you're a queen. Um, are you ready to hear the next voice? Yeah, now? yeah. Uh. So we went on an 18 to 30s holiday uh, with a group of girlfriends when we were 17. Uh, one person was 18 and they said that they could be our guardian if she was 18 for about a week. Imagine um, letting an 18 year old be a guardian uh, to several 17 so, year olds. Bad idea. Yeah, there we were. Um, my best friend and I were sharing a room and she just did loads of things that really fucked me off all week. <laughs> um, she was just bringing back all different guys every night. Um took loads of drugs and thought she was a whale and like (laughs) splashed around in the bathtub all night one night and um 
Another night I had a guy back who was 40 who tried to steal our passports and I had to chase him down the corridor and um, <laughs> get him back at like three in the morning. Um, that is so, a bad holiday, mate. Uh, my irritation at her was building um, and then she ate uh, half a tin of ravioli as you do and stuck the other half in the fridge so and tipped her over the edge. that night I slept with someone, a guy who was also on the, on the 18 to 30s holiday in the hotel and I convinced this guy to um, jizz into the half eaten tin of ravioli oh, um, that and is... then I like stirred it up and <gasps> just left it there and then the next day she obviously ate it that is... Uh, That's evil. I know. It's funny how the half tin of ravioli pushed her over the edge. I've heard stories... Someone I know who's not a nice person did vengeful jizzing. Wow. And um, I've always wondered how people do that because jizzing is so good that how do you pause just before and go, hold on, and go from feeling good to feeling hate. Yeah, how do you jizz in ravioli? I at this point I have to like I have to make peace. Do you know the way like people go? Oh, if you're asleep on your lifetime, you'll eat about six spiders or something like that. Uh-huh. I have to accept at some point I'm going to eat someone's jizz that I didn't. That I come didn't. on now, Alison. Have higher <laughs> expectations for life. No. Sometimes it's okay to have hope. Do you think so? <laughs> we were. I remember we were chatting um, a couple of months ago on the phone, and we were talking about food that we remembered as being amazing as children. Yeah, and then I we said, had it as adults." <laughs> <laughs> and then we had it when we were adults. Yeah, and it was gross. Yeah, ten ravioli was one of mine. Definitely, ten ravioli and ten macaroni cheese. It's the Me most. Too. It's the furthest removed from al dente you're ever gonna <laughs> get. Yeah, when I was a kid, I'd open up the tin, the tin, I'd be like, "Ooh, a taste of Italy, Italy." You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Do you know what this needs? Jizz. So bad. <laughs> I'll keep playing because there's actually there's actually a bit more to this sorry tale of of ravioli jizz. Um. Uh, anyway, then. The next night, she got together with the guy from the hotel's best friend who he was on the holiday with. Um, And I thought, oh, well, never mind. You know, she slept with a different person every night. But no, she decided she really liked him. They started seeing each other when we all got back to the UK. Um, They bloody stayed together. Um, So she got pregnant from the tin of ravioli, (laughs) but because she hooked up with that guy and they have kids now, she doesn't know that she has a ravioli baby. No, I know only when they do an x-ray and they see that the baby is filled with ricotta and spinach. (laughs) And they're like, why is your baby's organs the inside of ravioli? (laughs) <laughs> this is so stupid I know it's stupid I know I'm going to keep playing <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh <laughs> that would be quite serious I'd be very sad to find a baby and they're like all of its organs are gone and I'm like how do we fix this I'll keep playing I'll keep playing and we're 37 now and she has got a mortgage and two kids with this guy and um <laughs> Uh, obviously I didn't stay with or indeed even get together with the guy of the ravioli jizz. I don't know um, if he's willing to do that for you. But we will you know? like, me and him will like both be sitting at one of her children's christenings or <laughs> situations like that. Just like, oh, across the aisle. Like, oh, I hope you haven't told them. Oh, I hope you haven't told them. Shit, what's going on? Um, but now you're telling us. I'm feeling pretty bad about that um, decision I made. Anyway, there you go. This is like a legit big secret that we've got. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, like, you know, you ask someone to jizz in your best friend's ravioli. You think you're never going to see him again. And then they're back in your life always reminding you at family events. She sounded like she was annoying. Um, <laughs> she was, she, yeah. She, she didn't get any poisoning or anything, so it's fine. Yeah. But um, do you, did I ever tell you about the time I tweeted... Um, the company Love Honey that make they're a dildo factory. Yeah. And the factory saw the tweet 
and invited me for a pe- private tour. So you got like a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory of dildos. Yeah, and uh, and then oh, except it wasn't like there wasn't a group of five of us. And we, <laughs> someone would like disappear in a room of endless dildos and bite yeah. themselves to death. Someone's drowned in a river of lube, and they're just fishing out the body. Someone turns into a dildo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then a man sings a song. <laughs> and yeah, just about like, you got to be good or you'll end up being a dildo. That's that. <laughs> come with me. Come with me. Yeah. Yeah, just come with me. So, it's one of the maddest things that's happened to me. I'm like, uh, it's just, uh, I'm ex Catholic. I'm trying very hard. But I can't change my fucking past. Like, and this is why I love doing this podcast. It's like about people try and shame people for pe- feeling shame. And it's yes. like, fuck off. It's time for this week's guest. Please welcome Chaparat Corsandi. Woo! Thank you so much for being on our podcast, Chaparat. Can you do 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 again? I enjoyed that bit. <laughs> yeah. I do my own little. <laughs> I'm my own foley artist. I do a lot of sound. <laughs> it's not really needed on the podcast, but I give it. I give it. Um, so thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, this is all kind of about shame and embarrassing stories, and and uh, kind of about those stories that you've you've put deep, deep into the to the bottom of your soul. Uh, um, what 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 do you feel shame about? Well, I've been doing a lot of healing around shame lately because I'm from the 90s where shame was a massive big thing. So Mm. the culture was utter ladet culture. So you match the boys pint for pint. You did whatever the worst of the lads did. So I had to work on Then I wrote a book called Nina's Not Okay. And in the first page of the book is something real that happened to me in the 90s yeah and I lied to every journalist when they asked me if my book was autobiographical I went no I've got an imagination I don't <laughs> <laughs> and so I never really told anyone but yeah I was thrown out of a nightclub in Eastleigh mm. in Hampshire when I was 19 and it was horrific. So, um, what did you do? Yeah, I can't. I, I still can't say it out loud. I still well, can't say it out loud. Unfortunately, yeah. you have to. Or, or <laughs> we're kicking you off the podcast. <laughs> no, I know that. Look, it was it was lewd conduct. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah. I need to know why you got kicked out of the nightclub. Oh, come on, God. If you don't tell us, it, is it in your book? Because I'll find it. I'll find it online. Look, it, yes, it was bad. It was okay. bad. It was really bad. There, there was some nudity, and uh, it wasn't mine. Um, but there's other things that are more shameful. This is really embarrassing. I once cancelled somebody else's show by oh. accident. Well, I went to the Leicester Square Theatre where I thought my show was, and. Um, I said to the guy at the box office, how many tickets have we sold? And he went, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, uh, nine. Oh, my and it's God. And it's a 300-seater, right? So then I stood there and I cried and he looked really awkward and I said, well, that's my career over now, isn't it? <laughs> nine seats on a Saturday night after, like, however many years in comedy. And I said, look, can you just cancel it? Can you cancel it? <laughs> And we'll close the show. And he went, well, brilliant. That means I can make the train to Birmingham to see my girlfriend earlier. I said, <laughs> you go off. You go off and see your love. And I stood outside the theatre and it was raining and I was crying. Oh. And I, I phoned my brother and he was having drinks in Soho. So I was like, look, I'm, I'll just come and meet you. So they met me and they just got me this pitcher of cocktails and just poured it for me. And I drank and drank. And then my agent rang me. And said, where are you? The, the theatre's after you. And I'm like, I cancelled it. And he was like, which theatre did you go to? Because, you know, they know me. And I, I went to the wrong theatre. I was meant to be at the Leicester Square Arts Theatre, where 300 people were waiting for me. But I've gone to the Leicester Square Theatre. Oh, my God. I don't read my emails. So then I jumped into a rickshaw off my face drunk um, 
Rana. a rickshaw as well. You must, they're only for the most drunk people. <laughs> Absolutely. And I got there and I can't remember anything about the show. All I remember is just telling them over and over again that I thought no one was coming. And then I think I cried at one point. Oh, my God. I got through the hour. But to this day, because I get to theatres really early, right? I don't sort of get there half an hour before. To this day, I don't know whose show I (laughs) cancelled. They might have had 50 walk-ups had they remained open and it's one of those things where there's someone on the circuit who knows it was them and to this day thinks I'm a complete <gasps> wanker oh my Sh- gosh Chappy Corsandy just walked in off the street and cancelled my show I might try and do that at the Palladium I'm just going to start walking into the <laughs> shows. it makes me more concerned about gigging at Leicester Square Theatre and I've got a show coming <laughs> And I'm like, that's really, it's weird there was no other checks in place except you can just go in and cancel shows. Let's start doing that to our enemies. Oh my gosh, that would be very good. That would be a great idea. So was it a glory in the nightclub? You have to, I can't, I can't even believe I mentioned it. This is, the thing is, right, I, I just get too personal, but I've only got half personal. I was very young. Okay. I was very young. But, okay. um. I'm, I love the fact that you won't let that go, by the way. I, I, <laughs> I'm really loving the fact Fern that I went a, into Fern a is whole like other Columbo. Story. She's like a blowjob Columbo. She like, turns around and one more thing <laughs> wasn't a blowy. You know? Do you know, I think this interview might be my most embarrassing story. <laughs> I don't suppose There's... you have any stories about wanking. Um, <laughs> well, other than I've been doing it for as long as I remember being alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm. I think I was a late comer to it. Fern, Fern was an early, an early bird, and she used to listen to yeah. Radiohead while doing it. Oh, now I remember. Right, I have memories of wanking when I was in Iran, and I moved wanking to in Iran is such a good book title. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, you're so highbrow. I was thinking a show title. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I would have been under the age of four. And I remember my mum. And obviously, you don't realise what you're doing. It's just a sensation. Yeah. And then I used to do it on the banisters and imagine <laughs> that there was a dinosaur coming to eat me. Right. What? So you got, like, uh, yeah. adrenaline. You got adrenaline. Yeah. There's a, I yeah. get this. It's a similar feeling. Yeah. And then I didn't realise that, that that's what it was until I was about, I don't know, 14 or 15. I went, oh, my God. That's what it is. And when I was really little... So is Jurassic that... Park like a porno to you? <laughs> I, I, anything with like a big monster. <laughs> <laughs> My mum sat me down when I was very little and she caught me sort of riding someone's knee. You know, like everyone used to... Have... Oh, dear. <laughs> and my mum sat me down and she said, when you feel that way, sometimes it helps if you just go for a little wee... <laughs> Right, because have you ever had that? Like, say you're in a bar with someone, you're on a date, and you start to feel really horny. You think I really fancy this person, yeah. And then you have a wee, you come out, it's over. You don't fancy them. It's no, I think your mum programmed that into you because that's (laughs) not what I do. And on that note, we have to wrap it up. Yeah. (laughs) Um, There there was me being bashful about a blowy in a nightclub. Yeah, like seriously, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Like genuinely, uh, it was great. We'll let you go. Pleasure, guys. Thank Thank you you. so much. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Sweet. I'm gonna spin the wheels. Spin, 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 spin. Ooh, it's worst friends. Lovely. Um, right. Thank you so much for listening to Wheel of Misfortune. You can subscribe to this podcast on BBC Sounds. Uh, so voice notes, you can send them on any subject. You WhatsApp it, right, to 07519494891. Or if you don't have WhatsApp, you can send it to misfortune at bbc.co.uk. We Love Misfortune with Alison and Fern is produced by Beth O'D. It's a BBC Bristol production for BBC Sounds. Getting revenge through your cum-filled ravioli. Getting thrown out of a nightclub for giving a blowy. <laughs> that rhymes with ravioli. Yeah. <laughs>